Welcome back to Weekend Express and thank you for staying with us. We are still with uh, Nadia Ahmed Abdallah, the former CAS, Chief Administrative Secretary for ICT Innovation and Youth Affairs, uh, who is right here in studio to continue that conversation. Before we enter the break, you said you always have something on your sleeve and you have authored, I think, are they two books already? Yeah, two books. Of Dreams and Whatever and yes. The Feminist in Us. Yes. So when you took on this role as CAS mm. and then that meant interacting more with young yes. people because that, that was your portfolio. Yeah, yeah. Among the few things or many things you may have realized about mm. young people in this mm. country is that they're looking for opportunities yes. but it appears that they are not there. Yeah. Um, what are some of the things that perhaps you embarked on mm. to ensure that young people who are looking up to you yeah. were able, you were able to either inspire hope or yeah. give them confidence? Yeah. I mean, um, one of the things I, I remember vividly that I made it my personal agenda was to go out. So I spent very less time in the office mm -hmm. i was always around traveling around uh, kenya as we like focusing on kenya first yeah. i would go to different regions and talk to young people but yes. then i realized this that with young people they just don't want you to talk so when you go to them i'm not a politician mm -hmm. so i'm not gonna go there carrying money but i used to go there with a team a team of people who are going to offer them loans like youth fund i used to go with a team that could actually give them opportunities national youth council you know there's ajira digital so i would get a whole package and con uh, collaborate kfc whatever it was mm -hmm. so that when i go have these conversations with young people i also bring the players that are there who can help them leverage on opportunities or create a sense of bettering their livelihoods so yeah. that's one thing that i did mm -hmm. and then the other thing that i did is anytime i had an opportunity to converse with development partners mm -hmm. i made sure that they would take up an agenda or a project from my office and from the mandate that i had and make it their own in streamlining young people towards that mm -hmm. and so that kind of helped young people to see like okay there are programs and sometimes we don't really have to fully focus on government we have to focus on also other things there's the parastatals there's the development partners and other people mm -hmm. and so th that's one thing i wanted them to do the awareness because for a long time our young people are always complaining government's not doing this government's not doing that so now that there's somebody who understands and looks like them can can i now create that bridge of opportunity and actually that had a very big uh, ripple Im uh, impact mm -hmm. there's some young people who have interacted with who have gotten some jobs yeah. in government in parastatals in developing uh, spaces others have created their own uh, opportunities mm -hmm. and others are still learning how to be themselves and stand on their own mm -hmm. yeah because the your position that of CAS is one that was not quite understood very much by Kenyans you know. um, <laughs> and uh, you see you you, you deputize the yeah. chief uh, the cabinet secretary yes. whatever roles they are assigned yeah. to you um, what would be the measure mm -hmm. in your time as CAS mm. of the work that you did <sighs> so how are you measuring it in, ter in terms of uh, percentage, uh, in terms of you, yeah. you talk about uh, impact so much, yeah, yeah. Um, do you think that perhaps even in several counties yeah, that you went yeah. to, the young people are able to assimilate mm, and mm, take up their days mm. that you... I think uh, when it comes to, when we measure the impact, because I'm an impact-driven person, yeah. I would tell you that one thing that this I did with this position was to really champion for diversity and inclusion. And a lot of times when people talk about diversity, they're talking about gender. But I didn't focus on it that way. I focused on the diversity in terms of talent talent, diversity in terms of reach towards the office, diversity in terms of how are you creating innovative ideas to bring on, and inclusion, sit with them. I sat with them, I talked to them. But when you measure it in terms of 100%, to be honest, I came into this position with no experience in policy or national government. Yeah. So if I am to uh, like measure myself today, I'll tell you that I did a bit of 60%. Uh -huh. Because for me, I did a bit of learning, a bit of implementation, a bit of advocacy, and a bit of activity within it. Mm. And, you know, in two years and ten months, you really can't do much. Mm -hmm. But I think I made that impact. And I made that impact in quite a lot of regions mm -hmm. and in counties. And for me, also with individuals. Like, I had an open-door policy. Call me, come to my office, and let's see. If I'm able to help, I will help. And I tell people... Young people, don't come to me and tell me you want money mm -hmm. because I don't have it as well. What you need to come and tell me is, I, can you do this? So I've written a lot of letters for young people, recommending them, those who have worked with, those who have interacted with, open doors for people. And I think that, to me, has really been a huge measure of the impact that I had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because uh, when you came into the job, I'm curious to find out, because you know, it was government, it was public service. Yeah. What, is, what are some of the things that changed? 
about you about me with you yeah. around you <laughs> <laughs> so i stayed myself in terms of my personality very goofy mm -hmm. very relatable i mean if you go on my social media handles i'm one day standing in a podium talking another day sitting under a tree the other day i'm in my kitchen cooking mm -hmm. and the other day i'm dancing yes. and so what i wanted to do i wanted to create a 21st century type of leadership where we're not uh, making uh, not making leaders look like demigods but we're making leaders look like humans they can implement, they can champion, but they can still be themselves. But what changed the most was boundaries for me. Uh, I wear my heart on my sleeve. So when I got into government, because I felt like, oh, I'm the youngest, you know, everybody's going to be nice, you know. <laughs> but I realized that I needed to create some boundaries with people because some were overstepping, some were taking advantage of it, and some were just looking down upon me in the sense that, ashes, oh, ni aka ni katoto, fanya nini? So that changed. I became a very, whenever I walk into an office, I walk in with power because I needed to take out, up that personality and I needed to take up that responsibility. Mm -hmm. Number two, what the other thing that changed, I didn't have quite a lot of time uh, because, you know, you had to be here, you had to do this, and then there's this perception of people needing you to be like this. So I had to balance my small circle, knew who I was, but my social media page, my impact was all about my work. Anything else, it didn't concern you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, talking about, you know, the young person or the katoto tag, yeah. as you've called it. Yeah. Um, what ar 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 around you or among your peers, uh, yeah. from, you know, your fellow CSs, yeah. PSs, and yeah. then now the CS, yeah. CSs, yeah. what are some of the conversations that perhaps uh, you are having with them? Yeah. And whereas you say you, you, of course, you're one person that yeah. does not like to be belittled. Yeah. Did you feel that whatever you would even put across, perhaps even to the president, mm. was acted upon? Yeah, the first thing, my Kenyan Nimimi campaign, uh -huh. like 10 months into my job, I launched that campaign and the president was the one who came and launched it with me. Uh -huh. And honestly, you know, 10 months, you, you because it, it started off for me as just, oh, let me just use a hashtag. Then, you know, you meet people and at that time the UNFPA country rep, uh, Dr. Demola was in Kenya. Uh -huh. I just pitch it to him and says this is something very good we'll support you and then said now go and pitch it pitched it to the the previous cs after that the president and he was there mm -hmm. so that's one thing that i can say that was heard about me and was implemented and and the president also like took it up and then the other thing is the conversations that i had were more of how do i do this um am i being right sometimes you know pressure from the public uh, sometimes you know people are not very kind mm -hmm. and so it really sometimes it, it discouraged me so there are times when I would just feel like okay maybe I'm not up for this task or maybe this is not me but then I have conversations with the PSs with the CSs and tell them what I feel and they kind of made me understand that it's a journey and it's a process and even people who've been in public service for the longest time still learn as they go by mm -hmm. so it, they became like my mentors and i was always open to be corrected to be constructively criticized and to be able to change and become a person of mm -hmm. my own mm -hmm. yeah at the time there seemed to be some rifts um, in fact there was visible rifts in yeah. government yeah how was your relationship with you know president former president Uhuru Kenyatta yeah. and his deputy William yeah. Ruto, now president William Ruto at okay. the time so when i got appointed um i came at, I, I was appointed in january 2020. yes i came in at a time where there was covid at a time where the government i never understood what i didn't understand what was going on mm -hmm. because it so i just walked in and boom mm -hmm. everything was everywhere mm -hmm. and i made this decision and the decision was i'm being appointed as a public servant i am going to work according to the law i'm not going to take sides i'm not going to do anything and i'll just focus on my work mm -hmm. and that's what i did i had to report to the cabinet secretary and i had to if i'm called I'm told do this, I would do according to what my work was. Mm. If I'm supposed to meet the president, I give him the respect that he needs. Mm. If I'm supposed to be tasked to, uh, at that time, to now talk to, if it's the deputy president, mm. I will do that with respect. And so I decided to do that because I believe when you are a young person and you're trying to grow your career, you have to focus on impact. You have to focus on your job and you have to focus on how you're going to actually bring out the best of it 
any other noise to me at the end, I, I, I said, I'm not going to do that. I'm mm. not going to engage with anything. And so I focused on my young people. Yeah. I focused on the policies that I needed to do. And I focused on the work. And that's what I have been doing, even across, mm -hmm. even through elections and everything. I was always working and I was always focusing on stuff. Mm, yeah. The conversation on young people, you mentioned something uh, important. You, did, you had a zero experience in yeah. public service. Yeah. And it, it's something that even young people battle with, those who are either stepping out of high school, college, university, any uh, form of education. Mm, mm. Um, they do not have the, quite the experiences would be required. Yes. But, you know, opportunities come. Mm. There is one self-doubt. And yeah. number two, there is going through the process but not yes. getting it. Yeah. And then there is three, um, you know, appointments like yours. Yes. They perhaps hardly happen. Yeah. How does a young person prepare themselves mm. such that because there's a quote that it's a good time when opportunity meets a prepared person. Yes. Um, how does a young person, mm. because you work so much with the youth and I've seen yeah. what you're doing with them yeah. uh, even yeah. after you're handing over, yeah. but how do young people, you sort of, you know, prepare, prepare. themselves yeah. and, you know, are able mm, to capture mm, this opportunity yeah. in their camp. So I think the first thing young person, young people need to do, and which is something we don't really do often, is you need to first identify what is it that you want, what makes you move every day, what what's your passion. So there's passion and there's impact and then there's work. So what's your passion? What impact do you want to make? And what work do you want to do? Because work is what will pay your bills. Mm. Passion is what will drive you, and impact is what will grow your, uh, your profile. Uh -huh. And so if you are passionate, impactful, and you want to work, you already create a foundation and a basis of what you want to do moving forward. So, so from there now, if an opportunity comes, it will just meet you, and what you have to do, you just have to be confident. Of course, a lot of people will be like, oh, but this is just book and everything. But it's a mentality change. Mm -hmm. You have to. It's, it's hard out there. Opportunities are scarce. I can tell you because I know, mm -hmm. even right now, opportunities are scarce. You have to go above and beyond, but you also have to be unique. What's your unique element? As a young person, yes, you've studied, or yes, you haven't studied sour, but what is it that you can do that will set you up mm -hmm. to be different from other people? Mm -hmm. Then from there, you just work your way. You just have to, honestly, figure more your conde and keep going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your highs were, you know, the policies, the Kenya um, Nimimi, yes. and all that. Yeah. What would be some of your lows that you experienced <laughs> in public service? Okay, so one of my biggest lows was losing my mother. Okay. Uh, Five, four months, four months into this uh, job, mm -hmm. it was one of the lowest point because I had two options. I had to either sulk and say, you know what, I lost my mom, I'm not going to work. Mm -hmm. Or I had to now incorporate my grief together with my impact and productivity and work my way up. Mm -hmm. Number two, I think it's the whole perception of y everyone is focusing so much on trying to find out who brought her in. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody is focusing on the background you have, the qualifications you have, the merit. No one focuses on that. So sometimes I'm human and that also gets into my way. And then also when it comes to public service, I think it's because um, people are so used to that particular space that when something, someone new comes in, people sometimes tend to be so rigid about it before they can actually do something. So you find that a lot of people who are very um, rough, but at the same time, they're not willing to help you and open doors. But then again, I had a very good team. And for me, that really helped me um, and made me literally now make public service a personality trait that I have in me. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Among the five things that you've publicly and openly shared yeah. Nadia, about what people do not know about you, yeah. a few things strike of yeah. all the five. Yeah. Um, you know, number three, I gathered was you secretly want to live in a farm yes. and live an organic life. Yeah. And you add, of course, with your future husband and kids. Yeah. And four kids. Yes. You're very particular even about the number. <laughs> so are there any hopes? Uh, has anyone come knocking? <laughs> well, uh, knocking in terms of what? Cause <laughs> <laughs> Will the status of your number three change? <coughs> uh, is, I, I, I hope changed? it does. Uh -huh. uh, has it changed? Um... It, it's complicated, uh -huh. um, but I would say no, it mm -hmm. hasn't. It I'm hasn't. still not married. Uh, I still don't have that farm that I need. Mm -hmm. And But you know what? We are working towards it. I think uh -huh. right now I just want to focus on um, settling my career first because yeah. I'm also going through a very big change because uh -huh. I tell people, people find it very, it, it find it very easy. You know, you get taken from somewhere 
your two years experience, 10 months, you're now in this place. Then after that, you're told, now you have to figure yourself out and sort yourself out. So there's a lot of mental pressure. There's a lot of career confusion and a lot of transition within yourself as well. So I think for me, I want to first do that. If the, go the government finds fit to, um, His Excellency the President finds fit to me to work mm -hmm. again in the, the new government, I'm always willing and ready to work. Uh -huh. If the young people want to work with me, I am continuing to work. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's just about juggling and opening all doors and being very open about what you want and then letting God, the universe and your work speak for itself. Mm. Mm. Um, because of your upbringing yeah. and your qualities, yeah. what would you like, you know, sticking with the number four that you shared, yeah. um, your four children, how would you like them to be? What yeah. society would you like them to grow up in? Yeah, I think I would like them to grow up in a society where we stay away from tribe, uh, we stay away from color, and we just focus on individuals. We are Kenyans. I wear this a lot because it means a lot to me. Mm. Even if sometimes people are like, but are you sure you're Kenyan or whatever? But I'm like, yeah. And so I want to be able to have my children and even other people's children, we grew up in a society where opportunities are there yeah. and not just subjected to certain people, mm -hmm. but to everyone. And a place where they can talk. Mm -hmm and be very open and be very free and very unapologetic with how they want to say mm. yeah as you bring this conversation to a close um i've seen uh, you've been working around you know conversations with young people yeah so what have you been up to uh, since mm. you know officially yeah. you left yeah, that position yeah. um what are you looking at now yeah. and perhaps you know the future yes. even beginning tomorrow yeah <laughs> <laughs> so first of all i've been told this position i will always be <laughs> I should never stay away from it. Okay. So I will always be that because I, I made my mark and everything. But honestly, um, there's a lot. One thing I want to do is uh, I've started my own mentorship program, yes. a Pan-African one, um, where I'm going to be able to mentor young people and teenage girls across the board. But at the same time, there are a few exciting things that I am doing uh, and people will see. Um, I hope they work out, mm -hmm. but if they don't, of course, I'm also, you know, currently uh, actively looking for a job. Mm -hmm. You know how you are on one side and telling people, hey, be creative in what you do. These are the opportunities. Now I'm on this side. Yeah, like, I want to trust you about that. Yeah, how does it I'm, feel? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's my CV yeah, and CV. everything. Yeah. Well, it feels, uh, I'm scared. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of confusion. But I do believe that I have a profile that I can now be innovative enough with it and maximize on it. And... Uh, you know, one thing I can tell you is I'm always going to be visible mm -hmm. and I'm, my voice is always going to be heard. Mm -hmm. How, where, who, with what, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But you'll just see me. Kenya, global platforms, mm -hmm. this, that, this, that. Mm -hmm. My future is still very bright and the world is my oyster. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, you know, having toured around the globe, yes. uh, you know, you're quite, you call yourself a global nomad. Yes. What are some of the things that perhaps you've picked up about yourself yeah. and the rest of the world and how it perceives of you? Yeah. Um, I think uh, how they perceive when they first see me is, okay, this young person, this young girl, uh, very stylish, mm. very, very fashionable, up until I start talking and I start advocating and I start pushing then now I become this force that every young person and every person as well in some different environments want to associate with me because I champion a lot when it comes to inclusion. Like we really need to have young people who are included in policy spaces, who are included in political spaces, art spaces, not only in Kenya, mm -hmm. but across Africa because our continent is such a small continent. Yes. And the other thing I'm seen as a borderless champion for opportunities. Uh -huh. Basically, whether you're in Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa, Namibia, Tanzania, Uganda, or Rwanda, mm -hmm. you can still be able to come to Kenya and work with us, and we are able to now create a ripple effect and a mm -hmm. good society. In 30 seconds, perhaps yes. you can you speak to young people and inspire them. Oh, so uh, to the young people out there and the teenage girls and the young women, I think uh, don't give up. Um, always be ready for an opportunity to come your way and don't let anyone ever tell you that you're too much or you're too loud. Speak up, uh, champion for diversity and inclusion within your spaces and always be a social change maker mm -hmm. the little way you can. And always remember, Kenya ni mimi na Afrika ni sisi sote.
Wonderful. Nadia Ahmed Abdallah, thank you so much for making time for us. Welcome. She is, we've been speaking to her, the former Chief Administrative Secretary uh, for ICT Innovation and Youth Affairs, talking to us about her story and, of course, her next move. As she says, she waits to see what life has to, uh, to offer. And, of course, she says we, we look out for, you know, whatever she will be up to in the next coming days. My name is George Maringa. Thank you so much for watching Weekend Express. I'll be back again at 1 p.m. with Weekend at 1. Please stay with KT News. Thank you.